Hi everyone, welcome to the next part of the tutorial reversing with hyper -DVG. In the previous part, we talked about thread specific and process specific debugging. In this tutorial, we're gonna see how we can use the script engine of this debugger. Uh, just a quick uh, outline of what we're gonna talk in this uh, part. Uh, we're gonna talk about basic principles of uh, the script engine. Um, and uh, different diagrams uh, also we're gonna see why it's so fast uh, compared to the WinDVG and then we're gonna go to some uh, pre-liminaries uh, and like keywords operators and how we can access or uh, modify registers and our flag feed uh, we're gonna see pseudo registers and number prefixes in in the script engine and we, uh, we will also see how we can use comments in the script engine another important thing is uh, different printing commands that are uh, implemented which is used for lagging uh, creating logs from the kernel and also we have evaluating and commands, arguments, variable and assignments, and conditional uh, statements, loops. And these are the keywords or the basic uh, statements that are used in different uh, programming languages and hyper is not, uh, not an exception. I also talk about how we can share the resources between different cores. And also, so we will look at some of the script engine functions like halting functions, event functions, interlock, and memory functions. At last, we will have a summary. Okay, let's see how how the script engine is designed. Well, it's uh, by itself, it's really challenging to create an script engine that, that is able to run in the kernel mode. Uh, whenever it comes to the VMX root mode, then it's more complicated. Uh, so most of the uh, modules or and most of the commands uh, or extension commands of HyperDVG are already running in VMX root mode. So the script engine should be uh, should support VMX root mode. And the thing is that uh, there there are some uh, principles that HyperDBG's script engine is designed based on these pr principles. Uh, the first thing is that everything should be uh, available in both user mode and kernel mode uh, and of course VMX root mode because uh, we're gonna use a script engine in user mode and kernel mode too. Uh, we have some commands that are uh, running in kernel mode but not in VMX root mode and we'll talk about them later. And the thing is that the execution of the script in each core is independent from other cores and this is a really important consideration that you should have when you are using HyperDVG's script engine. So uh, scripts are able to run on every core simultaneously. That's why we have something like resource sharing because each core is running independently. And uh, another challenging part of the script engine is that every memory access should go through a, through the safe memory access routines to avoid unhandled behavior, especially in VMX root mode. The problem here is that uh, you cannot even though uh, in terms of Intel uh, terminologies for the ring, even though the hypervisor or the VMX root mode is uh, more privileged than the user mode, however, you are not able to easily access a user mode from the VMX root mode. Uh, so we're gonna uh, map the mm, memory addresses of the user mode to the kernel mode, and then we try to access those memory from directly from the kernel mode but not in the user mode we will talk about them later it's uh, it's a little bit confusing the fourth principle is that uh, HyperDVG's script engine is a CS style language which is combined with some mask syntaxes and it's uh, a little bit uh, like WinDBG you are already familiar with uh, how, how to create scripts in WinDBG you probably it won't be hard for you to learn the script engine of the HyperDVG. And 
the another thing is that the uh, output uh, for the script engine should be transferred to the user mode through a custom data transferring uh, functions there are a lot of ways that hyperdg tries to send uh, the messages to the user mode it's not really easily possible by simple routines because uh, actually it's a little bit complicated to handle data in vmx root mode but you should use the hyperdg's routine which uh, safely transfer the buffer or the messages from the uh, from the vmx root mode and the kernel mode to the user mode um, so that the user can see the results and decide about those results based on these principles it's guaranteed uh, to have a standalone and a fast script engine so why this is important because uh, being fast brings us uh, with thousands of many functions which uh, many options that helps us on debugging uh, the operating system and can solve a lot of challenges because uh, just because uh, the script engine is fast for example imagine that you can set uh, hundreds of conditional breakpoints uh, or i mean tens of uh, on tens of functions all of them with a high rate of execution and the systems are still working normally so this is a uh, really good uh, you you have an excellent chance of uh, debugging your target this is simply not true about WinUG. for example if you put uh, just one breakpoint on a high, on a function with a high rate of execution then you definitely end up with the system being unresponsive so this is why it's important to have a fast uh, script engine okay let's see how it works internally actually hyperdg is a script engine are running in two uh, different modes. The first uh, thing is that if you just uh, pause the debugger and everything is paused and uh, you are running an S script on just one core, just one single core, so you're gonna use an S script like uh, let me show it here. Uh, you print, uh, use the printf function and uh, simply showing a message of just creating a log from the one of the registers, like in this example, it's rex, and then uh, it goes through the lexer, the parser, and then uh, converts to an in intermediate format. So we'll uh, send this IR format code buffer over the serial, over the TCP the target debuggy and the target debuggy tries to evaluate and run the script and then send the uh, results uh, in a safe way uh, back to the user mode uh, debugger over the serial and the host if you are running a hyperdg on a, a virtual machine another scenario this is a simple scenario where we are simply uh, just pausing everything uh, we will have some examples to clarify what I mean later, uh, probably in the next parts of these tutorials. But for now, just in, just consider that we have two options for running a script. The second option here is that uh, whenever an event is executed uh, in HyperDVG, we have a chance to execute or S scripts uh, as you can see from the previous parts uh, as you saw in the previous parts there is a keyword S script on each event uh, which means that whenever the event uh, triggered uh, for example a syscall is triggered then uh, your action uh, will start uh, executing the action actually can be a break which uh, eventually just breaks and notifies the debugger that something has happened uh, it only works on debugger mode and another thing is that uh, you might run the custom code which is a simple assembly uh, function or assembly codes and uh, an important function or the most important function is the script engine which it lets uh, you to run the uh, the script you can uh, then send the result back to the debugger mode or you can just uh, simply continue without any uh, without halting the system 
So uh, the thing is, uh, I explained it in the previous slide, but let's just have a fast review of why uh, the script engine is uh, so fast compared to WinDVG. And uh, the thing is that it's fully kernel side implemented. Uh, so everything is done in post kernel mode and remix root mode. And there is no user mode interaction, which means that whenever your script get a chance to get executed in the kernel mode, then everything is executed in the kernel. Uh, this is different from uh, the way that WinDBG implements its script engine. In WinDBG, everything is passed to the debugger, which might be a user mode debugger, and you might pass everything, for example, through a serial port, and the script is uh, running completely on uh, the user mode part of the host if you're debugging a VM and uh, after that you, you will uh, ask or query for uh, for the things that, uh, that 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 are needed by the script to be executed for example the script might ask for a register or might ask for a memory address then uh, there's an interaction here between the host and the guest or the debugging and the debugger and after that, it tries to execute the scripts in the user mode uh, part of the debugger. So this interaction uh, is just, we completely removed this interaction and everything is running on the kernel side. Another thing is that uh, there's no halts while executing uh, an script, uh, which means that as we don't have any interaction with the debugger, you can just simply continue the execution. You might need to just check some of the parameters uh, and uh, or create some logs. Uh, there's no need to uh, halt the entire system and easily continue without any extra uh, interaction with the debugger. Another thing is, uh, as I mentioned before, each core executes the scripts independently. And it doesn't matter uh, if uh, two cores are running a script or maybe more. Uh, um, for example, eight cores are simultaneously executing a simple script and there is uh, nothing uh, because they are in independent, there are nothing between them. So you can uh, easily execute a scripts in all cores simultaneously. Also, uh, there is an efficient buffering method used uh, in the script engine. You might take a look at the source code. Actually, uh, it just removes every, just, it's just a simple buffering method that uh, tries to accumulate the messages uh, around the debugger and then send them uh, to the user mode or might send them immediately to the debugger. These are uh, these are the things that are implemented in the uh, script engine of the hybrid VG and you simply use it for example when you use a function simple function like a printf then you definitely s use this efficient buffering okay now the next question is how much is faster uh, generally based on the results that we published in an, uh, in an academic paper uh, WinDVG uh, uh, checked uh, uh, on average uh, like uh, 6,941 uh, conditions and meanwhile HyperDVG checked over uh, 9 million conditions in, uh, in 5 minutes. So on average it's, uh, it's substantially faster uh, than WinDVG, it's about 99.9% uh, .9 faster than the WinDVG one is added here. So it's uh, just a simple uh, comparison, uh, comparison uh, between the HyperDVG and WinDVG is almost 300 uh, times faster in EPT hook 2 which will be discussed later and it's also it's 3000 uh, times faster and it's 1000 times more than 1000 times faster in EPT hook and if we want to just simply hook system calls it's almost 2000 uh, times faster than WinDVG. Okay, uh, let's see some of the basic concepts uh, that you, we should know before uh, using this. Here is some of the keyboard keyboards that HyperDVG uh, supports. Uh, 
as you can see, it supports POI or dereferencing a pointer or accessing the memory pointed by a pointer. Uh, the ref, which is uh, like uh, ampersand, like uh, and uh, sign for dereferencing, for getting the reference address of the specific variable, getting the pointer to a variable, and it also supports DB. Uh, which gets the low eight bits of uh, a variable or a, a value, and then uh, it has high, which uh, refers to high sixteen uh, bits of uh, value, low, uh, which represents the lower uh, sixteen bits uh, DW, which uh, represent uh, DW or defined word. Which, rep uh, which represents uh, low 16 bits DD or defined D word, uh, which refers to 32 bits, and DQ or defined uh, quad, uh, which refers to 64 bits, and not, which is uh, which flips uh, each bit, uh, each and every bits, and uh, NEG neck, uh, which is a true false logic flipping. And as you can see, most of them are same as uh, the uh, keywords that are used uh, in WinDBG, except this ref that is uh, that uh, it's more uh, like referencing a variable, uh, like getting the pointer to a variable, and it's used mainly in functions like SPLock and other functions. And here the operators. That are supported by HyperDBG, and it's just based on the precedence of uh, these uh, operators. You can use these operators in your scripts. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I don't need to explain too much. So now let's go to another slide. Uh, here are the registers that are supported by HyperDBG. Somehow, like WinDBG, currently HyperDBG supports these registers, and as you can see, almost all of the re registers are starting with an at, at sign uh, mark in HyperDBG. So, uh, if you want to use the general uh, purpose uh, uh, registers, you can just the name of them or if you, the, there are also other 64 bit uh, mode registers and stack pointers you can also access the rip or the program counter uh, instructions r flags and each of the bits of the r flags are also separately you can uh, put a value on each bit of the R flags, data segments uh, and uh, other segment registers are also available and uh, control registers, memory management registers, interrupt descriptor registers and also debug registers are also available in the script engine of the HyperDBG. You can also use uh, model specific registers, however, uh, Using these model specific registers needs other commands like RDMSR or WRMSRs. And also, as I told you before, R flag bits are separately have uh, their abbreviations in HyperDBG. For example, if you want to put a value on the carry flag or the parity flag, you can just uh, use the uh, you can uh, just use them just like uh, registers. You can put the value or read them just like uh, registers. There are also some pseudo registers. This might, uh, whenever you uh, are uh, listening to this uh, tutorial, there might be an updated version of these pseudo registers that you can go uh, to do the documentation and see the updates. But for, uh, for now, it supports a dollar sign uh, before each pseudo register has a dollar sign before it starts, like dollar sign PID, which means that the process ID. The current process ID that are currently executing, or PROC or PROC, uh, which is the address of the current process, or the E process of the current process. There's also other important registers, uh, pseudo registers like a P name, which is a pointer to a character I have a 16 byte wide 
character array uh, of the process name. This is uh, something really useful when you are trying to use the script engine. For example, you want to check for the name of a specific process that, that are currently triggering an event. And there are also some specific, I don't want to talk about this uh, register because it's pretty clear, but about these two registers, dollar buffer, it's a pre-allocated buffer. I will explain it later. Uh, we can access the pre-allocated buffer uh, if, we, if we just try to read or modify these uh, pseudo register and also another uh, important pseudo register is dollar context uh, each uh, as i told you before each event uh, has a has a context uh, you can see the documentation for each event for example this the context for the system call uh, events are the system call id which is available on rex register so you can just try to read the context and decide uh, what you're going to do in your script and if you want to use uh, by default everything in hyperdg is in hex format so if you want to just use other formats other than hexadecimal you can uh, use uh, these prefixes of course if you just put 0x then it means the hexadecimal but if you don't put anything it's uh, still interpreted as hexadecimal and uh, there's nothing like decimal in hyperdg uh, if you want to use uh, uh, a value in a decimal format in the script engine or in the entire debugger you can use zero n prefix which shows that the current address is a decimal address or zero t which stands for octal uh, zero y which which shows that the uh, that the value should be interpreted as a binary value for example uh here it is uh one two three four five which is it inter interpreted as hex uh then we have zero y one zero one uh, and, uh zero one zero which is interpreted as binary and zero n eighty five five uh one two which is interpreted in the decimal format and zero t one five seven one six which is inter interpreted as octa and uh, the comments in the hyper which is the script engine is pretty similar to the uh, c uh, the, to the regular c comments like uh, this signs to create comments just like the c language Okay, now let's see how we can print a simple value in HyperDG's script engine. Uh, basically, we can use the print command to print uh, expressions. If, you, if we, we want to evaluate an expression, we can use the print on. However, uh, this command is not able uh, to print the variable or messages but because uh, it just tries to evaluate a simple command that's not uh, designed to show the messages and instead of this if you want to show a message then you can use the printf function and let's see some examples the printf and the print command are the same uh, for you can use the print as a command uh, but if you want to uh, use the print uh, in the script engine you can just put some uh, parentheses between uh, your between the start and end of your expression and it's pretty okay so if you want to just show uh, use it as a command then uh, print uh, rax means that uh, we should print the rx register printing the dollar pid means that uh, we should print the process id of the current process and also we can uh, combine them in some expressions uh, adding them or uh, also we can add uh, keywords like poi ecx which means that we should reference or get the value of the uh, ecx and show the results it's exactly the same as WinDVG. also other things if you want to just uh, get the data in a 64-bit format you can use the dq keyword uh, also the thing is that if you set the symbols uh, or the symbol uh, you can uh, use the na the name of the symbols for example if you want to 
simply uh, create a lock from uh, NTKD default mask, which is a variable in the Windows. Think the kernel debugger mask of creating logs. You can just put the name of the variable or the symbol name directly and use them between this keyboard or within the uh, expressions also there are other examples that, that are here for example dq poi r8 plus 10 plus 0 x8 uh, it, it should be noted that 10 is the still like 0 x10 which is still interpreted as hex so it, if i want to simply explain it it adds 0 x10 to uh, r8 register then finds the value pointed by the result of this addition, then adds 0x to this result and eventually shows the value, uh, value in the address that, that is computed here.